here. Time for another update on the status of the label Hogwarts. And this time around, we're going to be talking about this new section, which you have not yet seen. I'm going to tell you, I've been trying to do something that I don't usually do. And it's actually pretty much a first for me. What do I mean by that? Building trees. Uh, initially, all I wanted to do was just to try and make this section here or as much as I could make. But then before I actually managed to start making over here and continuing gradually the whole area that I've decided to make around the Great Hall, I spent probably 10 to 15 hours on designing these two trees. Now, first, I want to show you that's why I, uh, that's why I have placed the side building over here with Filch's office. Just over here, I've placed this tile displayed so you can see it properly, so it's not on one side. But basically, the idea is for this to accommodate the building from the side, and also just to show how it would look once everything is finished now naturally this is going to be longer going deeper into the rocks this is going to be rock framework sloping downward but the main idea is for this to be positioned properly and looking from here to be kind of the same proper height and not too far to the left or to the right, not covering the uh, courtyard way too much. And I think this position is actually fine. Now over here, I'm going to mention right now, this is all visible and here you can see all sorts of holes because this is going to be covered by the rocks eventually. So I don't see any point of actually uh, wasting pieces there. My green pieces are not all that many and I don't see any point investing further into uh, needless pieces that will not be seen. This is pretty much strong enough to support everything. Now, uh, I'm going to remove the side building a little bit so you can appreciate and see the whole new scene that I've made. But first, <laughs> I want to talk about this tree over here. Building trees has always fascinated me. Uh, and I never thought I was any good at it. I don't think I still am, but I really wanted to put some real effort behind it. And uh, seeing that I had quite a few of these, I am not sure, but I think they're kind of rare or expensive pieces, these orange leaves and these other green pieces there that I've used on the other tree that you'll be able to see once I remove this completely. Um, I think the Winnie the Pooh set has some of those. But anyway, uh, while I was building them, I kind of went through all sorts of different phases. I initially wanted to do something else, ended up doing something different, then ended up doing a third thing along the way, and the final result was something completely different. Now, this tree, initially, it was um, supposed to be a kind of dying tree or... Well, not necessarily dying, but more like a tree with not many leaves. But it ended up being quite the opposite. Now, um, what I am kind of bothered about this tree is that it... I mean, I've shown it to, it, shown it to a couple of people and they seem it's fine. So I guess it probably bothers just me. But it kind of how obvious the bowl shapes are. Uh, which is not completely unnatural. I mean, it is a tree, but to me, it kind of stands out a little bit too much and I've tried to make it a little bit less obvious, but still, uh, I think it looks actually nice. Now, the only problem I have with uh, this whole thing, you now let me try to remove this with one hand without breaking everything. There we go. Uh, is that actually this covers a lot of what the side section of the great hallways or 
the way I usually frame it, the front. I know the front is over there, but you know, like when you approach from the lake, this is the side that you see and probably the way that this will be displayed one day is going to be the most visible viewed angle of at least the Great Hall. So you wouldn't really want to cover most of it with trees, especially when this is kind of a private kind of idea of mine that I decided to do it, although it trees are not here. Usually in the in the movies you don't see anything here. Here it's pretty bland and bare, really. Uh, the only thing that really is present in the movies is basically the fence, which doesn't necessarily look exactly like this. But I felt that it just it needs something. It's so boring to put so much tan. I, I know the castle is mainly tan and it, it's normal but I wanted to put some more color some more green and it really made sense in my opinion to kind of have this kind of a rocky path going around the great hall and I wanted really to have like the feeling of serenity here that perhaps uh, it would be used for not only students, but even teachers to relax and just take a stroll and to kind of just spend some quality time by themselves or maybe with a friend or maybe even have lunch, just a secluded space to just chill. And also, have you ever wondered that this building, despite being over here in the films, it's not really clear how you get to it. I mean, I guess you go this way, but there's just no pathway, there's nothing, you just go around. And I thought that, well, if it's a normal route, then uh, it should have at least a pathway, something. And that's why, that's why I decided to tilt the building with the door facing this way. So basically, uh, in order for Filch to go to his office, you have to take this long walk, which Actually, it's kind of fitting in my opinion because it would only add to his overwhelming grouchiness. Let's talk about this tree and I will take it out and see if I can zoom on it properly without it falling apart. It hasn't yet, which is a good sign. Now, um, initially I had made it with even more pieces, but Currently, as it is facing, you know, the wall of the building so closely, I have removed a good majority from the back, as you can see, because they're not visible anyway, and it really limits uh, as to where the tree is uh, should be rooted. So uh, that way I can have it closer to the building without uh, actually interfering with the pathway. And uh, it's actually doesn't really matter, but it actually is a bit um, convenient because now I can show you how it is built. Uh, I thought about making a video about how it is, but I not really something that I couldn't say proud of, but uh, I mean, I am proud of the end result, but it's not like a, something so much interesting. Even the branches, um, you have to remember, I am limited by the pieces I have and the pieces I have in brown, any kind of brown, be it reddish brown or dark brown, are quite limited. I'm even surprised I had enough pieces to build this much. But I use these um, cylinders here just to give it a bit more texture on the uh, start of the tree and the stem. And here it, the branches don't really matter all that much. It All that mattered to me is that um, I'll be able to f kind of have the flexibility. So as you can see, we can spin it uh, 360 degrees over here. And then with here, you can also go up and down quite a bit. And with these uh, bricks that have uh, snots on uh, all five directions, it really helps. So I have used these uh, reddish brown and green uh, flower pieces, basically each a uh, little branch here goes with six leaves 
and we have each uh, branch with uh, basically five of those well place for five of those but not all five are placed as we've removed the ones in the back and I have a Cornish PC over here hidden that one could see perhaps if they would stare a little bit at the tree again uh, initially this tree was supposed to be kind of dead and uh, not really have any branches and it looked okay that way but in the end I decided to experiment a little bit more and I think the end result is fine um, perhaps I will play with it a little bit uh, in the near future or maybe not so near future and see if I can improve it uh, not necessarily make it better but improve it in my mind if I would think it's better in my mind then it is better <laughs> but perhaps some people would like this version better um, I even was before filming I will had decided to take this thing down and uh, go back to the original dead tree design but uh, the two three people uh, in my closer circle that are monitoring uh, whatever I do and giving their opinions for which I thank them um, told me that it actually looks pretty good and that if I wanted to try the other thing I should just make a new tree top advice but yeah I ended up not uh, destroying this one yet and also these trees I mean I know once again I'm mentioning maybe you don't like them here which is fine I might not like them here tomorrow or a month from now or a year from now but having made them it uh, means that I can stick them here right now but maybe at some point I'll decide that we'll place the tree here in the on the corner because it would make sense also it would not interfere with the building at all and yeah why not uh, but for now it will be here who knows what will happen in the future now I will leave this tree to the side over here and I will talk about well actually before we talk about this tree I want to talk about these benches now let's show you this one here now as you can see it's nothing too uh, complicated these benches I kind of wanted them not to be too tall again it's kind of weird when you make a bench that is kind of almost up to the minifigs um, like neck <laughs> so I tried to bury it a little bit in the ground and leave less texture there and just have it basically more practical talking uh, speaking about practical initially as you can see that I have placed two one by uh, two snot plates and uh, initially I wanted to place uh, see, ah, yeah, over here like on these benches these one by fours and I want to use that initially but as it would look better visually but this way um, it actually allows two minifigs to sit next to each other and it would look actually quite fine only with like a uh, half of one of their legs is sticking out which is totally fine in my opinion so uh, that's why I ended up using that as for the pathway itself um, it also kind of changed quite a while uh, quite a few times sorry uh, while I was building and I wanted to have this kind of texture that's why I made it to the side kind of a, a few layers with plates and the pathway I wanted it to look kind of inward to the ground as opposed to the surrounding to the left and right and initially I just started with um, the round uh, two by twos in gray light bluish and dark bluish and added some moss green here and there and then I added some uh, one by one a plate uh, no tile sorry and then b uh, before I actually added the round plates in gray light and dark I actually covered it all in green round plate so like this color but so my idea was for to create the illusion of the grass kind of growing between the rocks in the path but it really didn't look as well as I had envisioned it in my mind 
it uh, made it kind of confusing to the eye and I took it all out and replaced it with the same piece but in different color again uh, in light and bl light uh, bluish gray and dark bluish gray and I believe that is actually quite better actually over there you can see one stud I've missed I need to place something there perhaps there was a flower at some point and I forgot to add something in the blank spot but anyway um, also I created these gaps as you can see over here so I've used these gaps for the benches but every so often and over here like you have a bench then we have a gap then we have a bench then we have a gap and when you look from above it kind of creates the illusion of the uh, pathway kind of not being completely straight but kind of dilly dallying a little bit zigzagging so that was another thing at the same time I wanted it to be tidy so that's why we have the straight angles over here and enough it's not like we could have used for example uh, these kind of pieces over here and over here to create sharper angles but I didn't want to do that I've seen some other mockers do various things with these sort of pieces uh, in such situations and it um, looks okay but I didn't like it for my build so I decided just to keep it a bit more straightforward but at the same time use the gaps to kind of make the path a little bit not so straight <laughs> now let's talk about this tree this tree is probably the last thing I did before I stopped building and uh, for this uh, particular session and it just uh, first of all it's in dark brown and let me tell you the dark brown pieces that I own outside of sets basically can be can fit into this one of my hands uh, there's so there's just so few of them that I own but for some reason I wanted to just make a tree that is um, dark brown with those pieces it, it was kind of a double challenge for me to do that and I believe it it turns out quite well like initially again there were no leaves here because I wanted to do something completely different with this tree but it turns out that I don't have the pieces properly and I decided well let's experiment with these pieces that I will probably not use anytime soon so why not use them and it turns out quite fine now this tree unlike the other one is a bit pretentious it kind of it has two places where it's not so stable so I will take it out in the middle over there and try to kind of show you over here the main focal point of this tree were these uh, huge uh, half quarter circle pieces that they have one over here on this side and then another one on the other side I really wanted to create this kind of a tree where it begins straight and then it curves rapidly to one side 90 degrees and then if I even had two more I would have made it so it curves upwards again and I feel one day I'm going to um, try to improve on this tree just like that and then the challenge then was really to cover uh, over here with these slopes so it kind of looks natural you can see from the side they're kind of sticking a little bit to uh, the top but it's not perfect like this first layer it's like the same curve is applied really nicely but the next one is not as great but again it's a tree it's not supposed to be uh, as perfect and I just gave up trying to make it completely enclosed then um, I used a lot of black pieces uh, to make the kind of the heart of the tree because they are similar to dark brown and uh, I've seen a lot of trees that are made in this combination so it kind of uh, made sense also I have quite a few black pieces like maybe well not tons but quite a few maybe after tan uh, I have them black pieces the most so it was a, a lot more liberating to use those 
And after that, I did my best to use the remaining dark brown pieces to uh, just cover the uh, the black. And in the end, um, I just try to use these pieces here to cover the branches, which although it looked fine, it kind of looked weird from a certain angle because the branches, even though these pieces are quite nice for branches, these over here, um, that I had like 10 or 12 of them, they looked kind of strange because all of a sudden the tree became from this thick kind of shape to a lot more thinner branches. It was very rapid change, so it didn't look right. But now this way they are hidden, so it's not so noticeable. So I feel the tree looks fine. Now the problem with this tree is it's a bit, uh, like I said, pretentious and it tries to uh, fall apart a little bit sometimes. Like right now, I'm shaking it a little bit and it's not, but if I bump it somewhere, it it's something might fall off, which I understand is kind of normal with Lego. But for me, it's something really annoying in my builds when I do something and knock something out, just poke it a little bit to fall apart. Uh, maybe it's just, I don't have my priorities right. Next, uh, let's talk about the flowers and bushes. Um, I had quite a few of these, or at least I thought I did. And uh, I turns out I can make, uh, at least with the pieces I have, um, maybe like, uh, how many we got here, like seven. So I can make probably another seven or so. And it turns out that these pieces uh, are kind of expensive as well. Uh, and that annoys me because it means that if I would have started this way over here, it would mean that I would need to continue this kind of pattern, similar pattern all the way, which would mean that I would not have enough pieces to make enough bushes. Um, so yeah, I might have to invest again some money in bushes. It just kills me to, uh, even the thought of it, but oh well. Then we have this uh, these sharp ones that I don't really like because they're just this one whole piece and it feels kind of lazy to me when I use this kind of stuff, but they actually look okay when they're surrounded by everything else, I feel. If it had been just them, like it had been in the beginning, once I started building just to test it out, it looked kind of not great to the eye in my opinion, but when you have like the pathway complete and uh, the flowers and the bench and everything else, they kind of just add to the scene and I feel that they're just, they sit fine. And I have uh, plenty of those, so they're, they're gonna be enough. We won't have to order more of these bushes. Now the flowers, um, I want to make them a bit more customized, but again, I'm limited to the pieces I have. So as time goes on, I'm going to improve on the flowers, make them a bit more colorful, a bit more different. As you can see, we only have pink flowers with a bit of yellow here and there uh, as an additional blooming effect. But um, would like probably to add another two, I would say, uh, colors, maybe red and something in something, maybe not blue, but I don't know, something that would go well with red and pink, I suppose, probably not green. And uh, we'll just try to mix them up uh, once I decide which exact colors I'm going to use. And I feel like they are, the spacing is really okay. Uh, I've tried to make like a pattern here and there, but at the same time not to make a completely robotic pattern, which I feel is achieved. Now part of me feels that there is still something missing over here, especially here in the back. Now over here you can see that the building here is uh, visible. I'm going to cover these one by four spaces with green plate just to uh, increase the immersion effect. But especially over here somewhere, it feels like there is um, just some dead space that can be filled with something. I just can't decide what exactly to place there. One thing would be to place some animals or some fallen leaves, like for example, from underneath the tree, it made sense to have some fallen leaves around the tree, uh, which I have done. Perhaps I should use a few more over there behind the bench, especially. Which uh, brings me to 
what I wanted to show you initially, see how, how this is done. And it's really about, well, if you've been following this channel, you're quite aware of the methods that I usually uh, use. I remove one thing here. And then we have basically these moving platforms, kind of module kind of platforms that I really like to use because for me, it's very important to be able to deconstruct things. And if this is to be movable in like a new place or if I'm going to bring it someplace uh, one day, I would really want to be comfortable of um, detaching everything and transporting it and not having to go through all the hassle to put it back together. So for me, it really all makes sense for uh, everything to be uh, disassembled in a way. So uh, now with one hand, I'm really struggling for some reason to uh, remove this. And I'm going to try it a little bit. There we go. With minimal casualty. So yeah, we have one module here and then we have another one here where everything comes apart now. Initially, uh, I've just placed the minimal, the bare minimum of um, tiles just to support this evenly and just the bare minimum plates to attach this so it's easily detachable. But initially, I would, um, in an ideal world, one day I will cover everything with uh, a tile and then just have a few more connections just so it's um, a bit more stable. Like it probably even if it's if we increase um, just add additional rows between everywhere here, it would be more than enough. But one day when I probably find uh, a lot of tiles that are a centerpiece, let's say, and I'll buy like 10,000 and I'll just have all the tiles to use for such garbage like that. But yeah, anyway, we just want to show you like the idea of being able to pick this whole thing up. It doesn't fall apart. Yeah, I can shake it. I can move it, whatever. And it's... Uh, like underneath, it's a real mess, as you can imagine, but that doesn't matter. All that matters is that on the top, everything is uh, nice and smooth and tidy. And the last thing I would like to mention is uh, these uh, torches that I have placed all uh, around the path. And they were going to continue with a pattern, of course, because of OCD, sure. Uh, up, down, up, down with uh, not exactly even a spacing, but similar spacing. So we're going to keep that going. And it actually would make sense for these pathways to be lit up, uh, whether it would be by magical fire or normal fire. Doesn't really matter. Pick whichever you feel more comfortable with as a Harry Potter fan. And now over here, I have, uh, it's a bit of a jumble. I know it's a bit of a mess, but it's so it supports this kind of pattern of the building so you can kind of slide it in here properly and over here we can add something eventually just uh, haven't gotten to it yet I, I just don't want to add flowers it has to be something else maybe like mushrooms yeah we can make some mushrooms here it would make sense or moss we can make some moss I'll make uh, I'll be logical one thing that was suggested to me and I've just not had any time to do but I will probably do over here uh, right underneath we will have a little birdhouse, which I can probably fit in there. I don't have any bird uh, minifigs, though. I don't feel like I do. I'll have to search with uh, the bag with animals that I have, but probably no birds yet. We'll have to buy some birds. Anyway, even like this already, despite this being complete only, let's say, a third of the way, uh, it really makes a huge difference. I can't tell you how many times while I'm filming, filming I, I see this ugly green plate all the time. And I say that this, uh, especially when I, I had a photographer here just to make some nice pictures with a nice camera because my camera is not good enough to make really good pictures. Uh, it, he was taking pictures and all I was seeing is despite the pictures being really great, you can check them on Instagram, by the way. And, uh, the green play was really ugly uh, underneath but this once done completed will make a huge huge difference it will really look really really pretty in my opinion 
Now, I know the purists in you uh, will say, well, this is not in the castle, stuff like that. I agree completely. And if you feel like authenticity is something that is the first, second, and third priority in your uh, mock understanding, uh, I don't support your opinion, but I understand uh, why you would think that way. And I, um, that's fine. Um, and I try to be honoring the material and the sort the source material as much as possible usually but uh, I just felt here like it would make sense to let my imagination uh, go a little bit now uh, I would like to mention a few things that are a couple of things I believe that I've been um, asked about one of them is the uh, duration of the videos now I know that my videos are kind of long especially by uh, YouTube standards and even more especially uh, by uh, people's attention spans, standards, I would say. Um, not many people prefer to watch or can even afford to watch a 40 or 30 uh, minute video. Uh, but like I've said before, uh, I am doing this as a hobby and I feel like when you're doing something for fun and trying to create anything, uh, basically try to do what you would like to experience. What do I mean by that? Basically, uh, I try to make kind of content that I would like to watch as a viewer. And if I had someone that was doing uh, a big Hogwarts uh, project like I am, uh, I would prefer if they would not make a five to 10 minute video, uh, show you something, blah, 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 really quickly, and then uh, move on. I, I like uh, to be told a story, really, to listen to somebody talk, uh, and I don't mind um, watching or listening for 20, 30 minutes. Um, maybe that is because I don't really follow that many channels, so therefore I can afford to follow, uh, let's say, a couple or several, up to 10 maybe channels that are, um, and really give my attention to them. And I know that's not what uh, most people do. But then again, uh, what I'm trying to say is that uh, it's completely fine if you don't, uh, watch every video from start to finish i'm sure many people aren't doing that but um i just want to just justify a little bit why i'm doing it it's not simply because uh i don't know sorts of reasons people can invent why i'm doing it but i don't really uh predetermine how long a video would be uh as you can see i have videos that are even 20 15 minutes long i just build whenever i have the time whenever i have a desire uh, if I don't have anything to do or I don't feel like building, I, I would like to read, write, play some music, play some games, watch uh, some sports, play some sports or any of the other numerous hobbies that I have, then I will do that and not do anything with Lego. And uh, when I'm done building and I try to start to film, I talk until I feel like I've shown everything that has changed since the last time that I filmed because I would like my viewers to see everything that has changed and to be focused when everything has changed. Uh, that's what I would like to feel like when I'm watching somebody else's content, which unfortunately I rarely feel that way. Um, but anyway, uh, and if the, if the uh, footage turns out to be 40 minutes, it, it's 40 minutes. If it's 14 minutes, then it's 14 minutes. I find that out once I click render, <laughs> not before that, it's not predetermined. And anyway, enough about that. And the other thing I want to uh, stress about a little bit is the, uh, how do I put it? The progress that's been happening. I know every time I build something, I feel like we are progressing like forwards, but uh, for example, this platform has been sitting here for, I don't know, maybe half an hour or maybe eight months. I'm not really sure. I've kind of lost track. And I understand that uh, people want to see more uh, parts of the castle being built and stuff like that. But it's just, how can I put it? It just, uh, I keep going back to uh, something, not because I don't want to build something else, but because I feel like something can be improved. And even though everything here is pretty much done um, it's still not done in my mind uh, every every time I just try to focus on this or even think about other things it 
things that pop in my mind are how to improve certain things. And in the end of the day, I am not, this is not a race. I am not uh, like reaching uh, for some achievement or anything. There is not a carrot at the end of the uh, track or rainbow or a pot of gold or whatever you want to call it, whatever metaphor you want to use. Uh, if I feel like there's still something to do here, then we will do it. It obviously depends on time, pieces, money, all that stuff. You're aware of that. It's quite obvious. But uh, it's just the way that I build is uh like that i can understand that uh, people might be frustrated or um, they are urging to see for example the grand staircase or the aqueduct or anything else and uh we'll get there one day if uh, everything is fine but uh, i can't really promise you when that would be uh, hopefully i am thinking about um, planning to start the grand staircase within the next three months uh, but I don't want to promise because if I promise and I don't keep my promises, I feel bad and I really don't like to be put in that position. So yeah, anyway, uh, that's pretty much what I wanted to say. I hope that uh, you find what I'm doing interesting and uh, you can uh, help me out by liking, sharing, subscribing and follow me in any sort of social media that you find comfortable for you. I am on Instagram on discord and obviously here and uh what else uh, i feel like i'm forgetting something yeah uh you can expect the next update within actually there should be one more video before the end of the year if everything is fine it all depends on my uh, working schedule of course and other things but if everything is uh in order then um you should be able to see one more video uh, from me before the 31st of uh, December, which actually should be an interesting one. Uh, we'll not really share what exactly I'm planning to do there because it might not turn out at all, but I'm planning to do something interesting for that one. And uh, yeah, one last thing, actually the uh, community tab has been unlocked for me all of a sudden, uh, although I hear that um, it has been unlocked for new channels for about six months now. You don't really have to meet any requirements before it was 500 subscribers, but now it should be zero, <laughs> but still it took me about a year and a half to get my community tab, but at least it's a permanent one. It's not the one where they delete your posts after 24 hours, which is, uh, I guess, worth the wait, I suppose. And I'll be sharing some stuff there that I made some pictures, that I share on Instagram. I know some people don't like Instagram. I myself don't really, uh, not really a fan of it. Not because it's bad or anything. It's just that I guess I'm a bit old for Instagram. Let's say uh, I see some people doing some really amazing stuff there and updating regularly. But it's just for me, it's kind of a burden. But I'm, I try to be active there as well. But yeah, the pictures that I usually post there, some of them I'm going to be posting on uh, the community tab on YouTube. So you'll be able to see those there if uh, Instagram is not your thing. Once again, uh, thank you all for all the input and all the suggestions. Thanks for the uh, to the core group that always um, give their opinion to me in private messages uh, before I actually film. Really thank you for your input as usual. And I will see you very soon, hopefully um, before the year ends, but probably most likely after Christmas. So. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Up until then, uh, bye for now, guys. Stay healthy.